I totally get it. You're like, hey, he did part one. It was wrong. He did a part two. That seemed right. Now he's back again. He's on part three. Is he not just going to let this thing go? I'm not going to let it go. You know, sometimes you just can't let things go, but this kind of shows you how it's an interesting problem. So what I'm doing here is I'm working through the uh, Feynman lecture exercises posted on Caltech's uh, site. Link out to all that below. And this particular problem, if you haven't been following along, I'm on part three of the same problem. Uh, we have here a, a parabolic wire and then a bead is on the wire and the whole thing is accelerating that way. And so the question is, uh, how high does this bead go before it comes back down when if it's released from rest with respect to the frame uh, in that case? My first attempt was to try to calculate this force of constraint. Forces of constraint are really difficult in Newtonian physics because they don't have uh, an exact expression. You kind of have to figure it out some other way. So I tried to do that by assuming that the bead wouldn't accelerate in the direction. So these two forces, the magnitude, I, I can find the direction based on the inverse of the derivative of the wire. And that should give this. And then the magnitude I can find from this fake force due to the acceleration in the reference frame of the, of the wire and the gravitational force. And it didn't work um, in Python. Let me just show you that program real quick. Uh, because I'm, <clears throat> I do want to do one thing. I want to add an arrow for the normal force so we can see if that's at least looking correct. So let's add, let's go to the program. Um, I'm going to add an arrow for that normal force and see what happens. Uh, and then I think I know a better way to, to solve it. And I think I know what's wrong. Okay, so switching over here to Python, this is the program. Uh, let me just do this real quick. I can run this for a half a second. I tried, I tried a couple things, but let's see, 0. 0.5, run this. So this first just draws the parabola, and then there's my thing. And so it, let's go a little bit longer, uh, let's say 1.5. I mean, it seems like it's not completely whacked out crazy. Okay, so <clears throat> let's draw, let's put an arrow in here. So I'm gonna make an arrow. I'm gonna say n arrow equals arrow. Uh, position equals, let me make this a little bit bigger. Is that better? That's a little too big, but that's fine. Uh, position is equal to b.pos. Uh, axis is gonna be equal to vector Zero, zero. I'm just going to set it to zero first because I haven't calculated it in yet. And then let's make it uh, color, color dot cyan. Okay. Now down here, what I want to do is after I move the bead, I'm going to move the arrow because I want the arrow to be attached to the bead. So I can say uh, in arrow dot pos equals bead dot pos. And then the axis in axis, oops, in arrow, oop, arrow dot axis equals n. Let's just see what happens. Drawing. If you draw that too fast, see, that doesn't look bad, right? I mean, it looks kind of legitimate. It's pointing in the mostly the right direction, at least at the beginning. It's just the ball falls down. And so what I think is happening is it's just getting off the wire. And then I'm calculating it based on forces that aren't on based on the x position, but it's not actually on there. So here's one thing I thought, what if I just force it to stay on the wire? What if I just fix, manually fix the X, the Y component? So I could do this, b.pos.y is equal to K times b.pos.x squared. I'm just saying Y is KX squared, that's all. And that just fixes it, right? I think this kind of works now. See, so it, I'm, I'm forcing it to stay on there. And it looks like it's legitimate now, right? Um, <clears throat> so let's, we could run this for a longer time. Uh, let's do three seconds. And, and I want to find that position. So let's make a graph up here. I'm going to do this a simple way. F1 equals G curve. Um, and not going to put axis and stuff like that. And then down here, I'm just going to plot uh, X versus T. So I'll do F1 dot plot. Uh, the horizontal component is time, the vertical component is the x position b.pos.x. And then I, I can see the maximum position. Now let's print the maximum position too at the end. Uh, print 
theory max x max equals based on my other solution, which was a negative af negative af, which is mag af divided by mag g times k. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Because it's drawing the wire. And then this looks legitimate, right? So this goes down to a minimum position of 2.27.227. And then, but I get a, I theoretically, 0.2, so it's a little off. Um, again, I think it's a rounding error. I think this is okay. But let me, let me try one more uh, way to make this work. And, and I was thinking about a pendulum, right? If you have a pendulum swinging and you want to model that, you only care about the forces in the direction that it can go. Let me switch over here to the paper and let's see if we can figure this out. Okay, so I, I can find this direction, which we'll call uh, W, That's the, or W hat even. W hat is the direction of the slope. And then so if I, if I only care about the uh, change in position based on this, I think it should work, right? So what that will be is I can say F net W in the direction of W is going to be uh, MGW minus F fake W. So these are the components in those directions. So if I know this is a vector, I can find this MGW is going to be uh, mg, the vector, dot w hat. And the same thing over here. That component's going to be, uh, actually, I don't even have to say negative. I'd say fw. And then I can, once I know the force, I'll give me the change in position in the, in the w hat direction. And I can move in the w hat direction that amount and then start all over. So the one thing I need is what is this w hat going to be? So w hat is going to be equal to uh, the derivative of x with respect to x in the x direction, the derivative of y with respect to x in the x, the y direction, 0. So this should be, and that to divide by the magnitude of that. So <clears throat> w hat is going to be equal to 1. And then dy dx is going to be uh, 2kx0. But then I have to divide by the square root of 1 plus 4 squared k squared x squared. And that would be my w hat, which is a lot like what I did with the n hat. Um, so that's going to be my w hat. I'm going to use that and find the forces in the w hat direction. Why am I calling it w? I don't know. Uh, and then use that to update everything. So let's just let's just switch back over to Python and see if we can fix this thing. Okay, so that's all fine. Bead vector, that's all fine. Um, in arrow, I don't really need that. Let's get rid of that. Uh, let's get rid of this in hat stuff. And yeah, get rid of this. I'll just delete it. Let's just delete all this stuff. Okay, <clears throat> so the first thing I want to do is to calculate w, w hat. So I'm going to say w hat equals uh, the vector 1, 2 times k times x, which is b dot pos dot x, 0. And that's to divide by the square root of 1 squared plus 4 times k squared times bead.pos.x squared. Okay, so that's my w hat direction. That's my w hat. And it's going to change every time I move. Okay, so now I can say f net w is going to be equal to, um, the n hat is not in that direction. So it's going to be, uh, let's just calculate, let's write it up here. I can recalculate it. f g is going to be b dot m times g f fake is going to be negative b dot m 
times AF. So it's going to be um, FG, it's going to be dot, this is the dot product that's built in here, dot FG W hat plus dot FF W hat. You know, I just realized W hat looks like what? <laughs> It's W hat. That's not a what. Okay, so now I can find A W. It's going to be F net W divided by B dot M. The masses cancel anyway. Um, now with that, I can find, okay. I need the velocity in that direction too. So I have the initial, velo I have a bead velocity. So I can say, uh, VW equals dot B dot V. I'm going to need to make a new velocity. I can do that. This seems really complicated. Uh, okay, so now I have the acceleration of velocity. I can use that to find the new velocity. Uh, VW equals VW plus AW times TT. Now I can, now I can find the new velocity vector. That's what I'm going to do. So B dot V equals um, VW times W hat. Right, because now I put it back as a vector. VW is a scalar version. That seems, I should have just made a W a vector. Oh well. Okay, so now I can update the position. B dot POS equals B dot POS plus B dot V times dt, and that should do it. I don't know. Uh, did I turn off, did I still have that graph? Yeah, let's leave the graph there. Okay, I don't know. This may not work. If it doesn't, I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, it stays on there. That, it's not crazy wrong, right? I don't wanna scroll down, but let's do this. So I want it to be, oh. Too, no, now it's too small. Huh. Oh, no, what, what the heck? It worked. I got the same thing. Okay. That's a win for me. And for you, we all win. Um, and, and what I like about the solution is it agrees with my work energy, but it also shows the trajectory of the whole thing. So that was a tough problem. But it's the tough problems that makes better people. So I'm, I'm glad that I had that problem. Uh, and like I said in, in a previous version, uh, dealing with these force of constraint like that, you could actually do this with Lagrangian mechanics. I'm not going to do that right now. I'll probably come back to this at some point in the future. But I, I don't think they do Lagrangian mechanics in this course. So I wanted to do this without Lagrangian mechanics. But there you go. Code for this down below. The link to all the other video solutions down below. Uh, a whole bunch of other stuff down below. Pretty excited about getting this one to work. Talk to you later.